Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, just some updates on the panel. As you guys know who've been following me, I've been saving for a long time and talking about a panel upgrade on my 1968 Mooney M20C Ranger. Uh, quickly, um, be a little short video here, I've been getting a bunch of emails, trying to get back to everybody. Um, I'm trying to put the questions together. I'm high, I'll miss a couple questions. Um, one of these days I'll do um, YouTube Live and do a question and answer type session once I figure out how to do that. Um, but the Mooney is still at Mount Pocono. Um, it's about two and a half months now. Uh, it was delayed because of the COVID-19 on my two videos ago, I think it was. I, I kind of explained that. They couldn't work on GA airplanes for almost three, actually a little over three weeks. So I'm behind about three weeks and a couple delays and some shipping and some other odds and ends. But the good news is I'll be picking it up next Wednesday, crossing my fingers. Um, so which would be, uh, what date is that? I don't know what date it is, but it's the 16th is this Saturday. So uh, 16th, 17th, 19th, 20th, 21st, whatever the heck it is, I don't even know. Uh, but that's good to know. I'm mean, getting the airplane back and I'll be doing a lot of ground when I get there, messing around with the system, make sure before I do everything, before I take off. Uh, but let's get to the questions really quickly. Um, the Dynon, um, how much does it cost? What'd you get done? Um, how much did it lighten the plane up? Let's start with the cost. Now, I didn't have to get two 10 inch screens. I could have gotten a 10 inch, I could have gotten a seven inch. I could have gotten a 10 inch and a seven inch, vice versa, or how we wanted to do it. Uh, but because I was getting a whole new panel, Okay, and the old panel was all coming out anyway. Um, I decided to go with the 10 inch instead of the seven inch. So why do I have two panels? Why not have an iPad? Why not um, you know, stick with an iPad or whatever you know, case may be? It's because the, the 10 inch on the right side, I wanted to have engine monitoring kind of on that, kind of changing that screen if I had to. Um, while I'm in flight, I can take the engine monitoring off uh, the pilot side on the HDX Skyview, and I can put engine monitoring on the co-pilot side on the HDX. So that's one of the reasons. Other reasons is a backup. I'm still gonna have the iPad um, in the airplane uh, for flight. I'm gonna do my flight plans and push it over to the IFD 540 from Avidyne, and then sync it with the two Avidyne screens. The good thing is, is that Avidyne is very smart. Um, and Dynon is very smart, very good companies to work with and very good customer service, is that I can put a flight plan and everything else on my side um, with the HDX and then it automatically feeds over to the co-pilot side. So I've got to do things twice, which is great. And uh, the USB port for the um, IFR high and low and for the VFR charts, I just need one stick to download for the uh, uh, the HDX and it will feed to both screens, which is really cool. So um, let's get to the cost part of it. So I just got to kind of have a little bit of a tangent there, but uh, you know, you're talking about $20,000, I'm going to round up a little bit, $20,000 for two 10 inch screens, um, plus the wiring, harnesses, you know, everything is fresh in the airplane. Um, and so it's a really good in savings because I know a lot of people um, who do G5s, which Again, Garmin's a great product. Uh, they're all great. Aspen's a great. They're all great products because they have to go through the same kind of um, inspection phase and with the FAA and get approval and all the nonsense. They do their G-Force testing in the little booths and make sure it handles G-Forces and all that fun stuff gets approved. So they're pretty much all pretty good out there. But for me, you know, twenty thousand dollars plus labor, you're talking about thirty thousand dollars. And why is labor almost ten grand? Well, remember they rip out all. The old wiring panel has to come out, which me in my case, the panel, all the panel came out. It's a little bit more for me. Um, and you know, they get rid of the vacuum pump, the hoses, wiring, all the stuff comes out. And the old wiring in this airplane is just so old and so heavy. The new wiring is lighter, thinner, and it's that much more safer. Uh, so it's it is labor intense, you know, to do all this stuff and. You know, thank God Motor Aviation has helped me out uh, with some sponsorship stuff and working some things out with Dynon. It's a great, great thing that's going on for me. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so yeah, $20,000. But again, if you know you have two 10-inch screens. Now, if you go with a 10-inch 
only, you're looking at probably about 7,000, 6,000 ish with wiring and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, depending on what airplane you have. It all depends on it. You know, it, listen, it all depends on everything. Uh, but that's around about numbers. And if you go with a five inch, I'm sorry, if you go with a, a 10 inch and a seven inch, you're down to about 14 um, with both screens. Now, these screens are real. Have you guys seen in my videos, I've been taking, putting some pictures up on uh, my Facebook page. Um, and since I wasn't able to go into Mount Polk over the last several weeks, um, I didn't do any video updates. I'm not allowed in. So I don't want to get anybody sick, you know, uh, and then they're really, then they're closed down for a while, then it's really a mess. So that's her policy right now. Um, so you can get that price down. You don't have to get two 10 inch screens, but the system is really, really good system, user friendly, there's multiple options that you could do. So definitely check out Dynon Certified. Uh, if, you have, if you have a non-certified airplane, they also did that. And it's only been the last four years they've been doing with uh, certified airplanes. So then you add in some autopilot into that, you're looking at a couple more thousand dollars um, in labor. Um, so, you know, everything's said and done for me, I'm looking at about $30,000, $32,000, and plus $1,000 for the panel. And it's, it's a really good buy for me, and um, I explained to that a couple times in my videos that I bought my plane at a good time, at a good price. Um, as you guys know, the outside, <clears throat> excuse me, the outside is, is nine out of 10 with the paint, the inside is nine out of 10. Um, I had very low time. I put the majority of the time on this airplane. It's been heavily maintained. Uh, the previous owner, no expense on the previous owner, put a lot of money into it. And the bones are really good. The engine's strong. You know, you're not talking mid 70s for um, cylinder checks and compression checks and uh, scoping everything out, no corrosion on anything. So for me, the money I spent on the airplane and I've always been talking about the up a glass panel for a long time with autopilot for a long time. Um, again, you guys have been following me. Uh, so, you know, we, I took all that, I did take all that in consideration. A lot of guys were, you know, saying on some of the threads and some of the emails and some of, you know, why are you putting so much money in this plane? It's just a Mooney M20C Ranger. Well, I tell you, go on trade a plane and go on controller and look at what the 201s are costing or look at what everything else is costing that needs a panel. You're, look, you're looking at 70,000. 75,000, the panel is shot, it's not EDSB, the, you know, the engine's got 12, 13, 1400 hours on it. Uh, so it's, for me, it was worth putting money into my plane. I know what it does. It's still a very fast plane, the Ranger. I don't have all the passengers in the back. I'm focusing on me. And if passengers want to come along, you know, in the back, if I have, you know, three or four passengers, well, I got to scoop my seat up a little bit and, and they got to come along, cramped up a little bit. So. For me, it was worth it was worth it because my plane was is very healthy airplane. The bones are very healthy, and I still have 16 ish hundred hours to go before TBO at 2,000 like homing on the 360 requires. It doesn't require, sorry, it doesn't require, um, but that's 2,000 is is TBO. But you can go fat. You, know, you can go further than that if your airplane is, um, compressions are are okay. Uh, so that was my idea. But again, go go out there and check on these airplanes. Um, and they're expensive, um, and they need a panel, and they need ADS-B, and I've already had all that. The other thing is, folks, you gotta remember, is I sold everything on my panel. So if you go back to my old videos, or, you, or the pictures I've taken throughout the year, a year and a half they've been on YouTube and Facebook here, uh, all that, I sold all that stuff for over $10,000. Um, so, because it was still pretty good stuff, and people want that stuff in planes uh, that they're building, or whatever they're doing with their airplane. So that was over $10,000. So take that money and put it towards this. Now I'm down to around $20,000 um, out of pocket. And I got a fresh, updated, clean panel. 90% um, of the wiring is all brand new. And if you look at, again, look at my last video or two, you'll see how all the panels are ripped out of it. And you, you can also notice the insulation. Um, that shiny insulation is, 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 is uh, great insulation. It's um, noise proofing. It was, like I said, this plane has been very heavily maintained. It's been, it's brand, basically brand new. Um, another reason why it was worth it for me doing it. So I ended up selling the L3 uh, transponder, uh, which is, again, great. So I took that money and made a little bit of money on it. Um, well, very, very little. And then got the remote. Worked out a deal with L3 and remote transponders in the tail. But everything I had 
at my fingertips with the um, L3 um, uh, unit for the, that, that, that goes into the panel, I'm gonna have that same access on the IFD 540. So everything will be right there. It's a clean panel and I'm done. Autopilot. So autopilot will be coming in hopefully within a few months. Again, Dynon is waiting for the FAA for the approval. They've had it in the plane. They've had everything they need to do. And the um, servos are actually gonna be the s uh, servos. So, and that's a, they're very, very good servos, no complaints. Um, Kurt from Warrior Aviation, that's what he does in a lot of the planes, the s the autopilots. Uh, and he said they're, they're great servos. They're on point, they don't slither away, they don't get back on course. So it's really, really good. Uh, so I'm happy they're using that with the I guess partnership they're using with the with the S-Tech. So that's coming. And if you look at my panel, look at some of my pictures on my Facebook page, you'll see on the top of the IF, uh, top of the audio panel actually, uh, you will see a slot for the hard keys for the barometer, altimeter, uh, and the um, uh, your altitude, uh, the three knobs there. To the right of that is going to be where the autopilot is going to go, um, and I'll put it right now in the video uh, what it's going to look like. So I'm going to have a basically a fresh brand new M20C Ranger. After this is done, it doesn't need anything else for a long time. Um, and I think I'm gonna keep this plane for a pretty long time actually. So at the end of the day, it was a great idea. Um, I did it myself. I designed the panel myself with more aviation's help again. It's not because you know I've used them for, for, for years on my annuals. It's not because you know uh, they're helping me out with some sponsorship. It's they are really, really sincerely good guys that are involved in aviation and love the little guys. They love helping out GA pilots and they'll do anything to help out a GA, GA pilot. And Dynon is the same thing. Again, I'm not saying that because uh, you know I'm, I'm partnering with them uh, to help promote them in the Northeast. It's because they are a good company and they think about GA pilots. You know, they rather help people out and make a little bit less than, than, than kill everybody along the way with heavy pricing um, and work with you. And they're very, very good with customer service. And Kurt from Warrior Aviation and Kyle from Dynon were working, been working great together. And I've always been in the loop with everything on almost an every other day basis what's going on with my airplane because it is an investment for me. But Awesome. You can give Kurt a call. And, you know, on, on the, uh, the bottom of this video, you'll see the email, um, the website for Motor Aviation. Give Kurt a call. He's giving out estimates left and right. Uh, he's kind of getting a little busy. Um, and he's what, what we're going to do is uh, mention uh, my name, um, Chris Lee from Pilot Fund 101. And he's giving everybody who mentions my name. Um, they saw this um, from Pilot Fund 101's uh, website or videos to give you guys a discount in labor and parts. And he's worked with Dynon for doing the same thing. So if you're looking for a panel, upgrade. If you're looking for uh, an annual, if you're looking for something to do with your airplane, mention Pilot Fund 101, my name, and they're gonna work with you on discounts uh, from both manufacturers. So it's a win-win to save you a couple thousand dollars or more. So take advantage of that if you're in the Northeast. Um, even if you want to fly, if you're in the Carolinas, want to fly there, drop your plane off, it's going to be worth it for you to get involved uh, with that. Other questions I got, how does it work with the IFD 540 and the Dynon system and the SL330? Don't forget, remember I, I, I had to get the remote transponder to get the SL30 in there. And the reason why I wanted the SL30, not just another, not just another um, comm, is because I wanted the comm nav option on the SL30. So now I have Two knobs, uh, yeah, two knobs. Yeah, that's what I have. Two, two nav units and two, two separate nav units and two separate uh, comm units, which is nice to have. So shooting VORs, approaches, whatever, it's there. And all you do is you really go into the Dynon system and you click on that SL30 or the Dyn uh, or the IFD540, and it will work its work its way over. Um, and it's great and. It, system and it works well together it'll put the line on on the on the chart for you it does everything you want it to do as if you were getting a garmin or a, a, an aspen or whatever else you guys are looking into it will do all that for you and it's a really really nice screen the high definition screen glare resistant 
um, like the iPads that overheat and the iPads you have on there uh, that, you know, the glare, you're always going like this. But this is gonna be right here in front of you. I don't even have to have the iPod on, iPad on the yoke anymore. I'm gonna be using this to screen. Maybe have it on my uh, leg strapped on um, if I even use it. Uh, but I will be having the airplane for a backup. So I have two screens, the backup, a backup. I will have the IFD 540 backup and I will have, well that's to be my main, my main comp and nav, but I also have the iPad as a backup and my cell phone also could be a backup uh, if something would happen with the, the electrical system. The uh, the HDXs last about 30 minutes on electric, on your battery, I'm sorry, not on your battery, and the backup um, turn coordinator um, also lasts four hours on a battery worst case scenario if you can't find an airport within a half an hour um, or 40 minutes or so um, then you're probably a little more trouble than you need to be in uh, but you can get to an airport with that battery life um, on those uh, units other question really quick i know i'm probably boring you guys with this stuff uh, but i'm trying to give the ones who are emailing me and facebook messaging me all the information i can think of right now and maybe some of you other guys have questions i'm answering them for you um, the panel, the panel on the Mooney M20C 1968, and someone's calling me from Florida. And that's probably one of the Mooney guys in Florida talking uh, about the Dynon system because he's gonna call me back. Um, but I will call Daytona Beach guy from Florida if you're listening back. Give me one second to finish this video. I'm gonna deny you, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind helping anybody out, it's fine. I love aviation, folks, and it's in my blood, and I am proud to be here, and I worked very hard to get here, and I don't mind helping anybody out that, that needs help and needs ideas. Um, but the panel, the 1968 panel is a little bit lower, and the 69 panel is an upper, a little bit higher, so we had to raise up the panel just a little bit to fit, let's call him back. So, <laughs> I'm going to deny it again and get back to them until I finish the video. Um, <laughs> so, sorry about that. So, uh, it will be, that's to, just to fit the screens, I had to do that. But right, if you look at the, my pictures I have on there right now, um, I did pick the dub gray. That was, that was a bunch of emails going back about the color choices. I did do dub gray, it's nicer at night. Um, and so it's gonna be perfect. So, other questions, autopilot. Yes, it will do an approach you put in the bugs you put in you know how you know how high you want to go it will remind you altitude it'll give you minimums it will give you approaching minimums minimums terrain it'll give you traffic on the dyne on screens it'll give you terrain it gives you um you left a message uh it will give you uh synthetic vision so it's a lot of information on the iPad, on the um, HDX from uh, Skyviews. And I'm gonna have to get used to dialogue because I've been I've been using Steam gauges for a long time. And so I'm gonna have to get used to that because everything is so persistent and accurate on these on these um, new, you know, on the dialogue stuff. Um, and a Dyna makes it very easy to find stuff. And even engine monitoring, you know, all four cylinders will be, um, have their probes in there for, for, for all the um, heating um, on the cylinder temperatures. Fuel is to a T, uh, and so there's a lot of things that really come to you know precise because you have that option to do that. And when I lean, when I lean back, now I can really lean instead of guessing. You know, when it gets you pull it back, it gets rough. You put a little bit in. Now I can really dial in on my Lena Peaks and everything. It's a whole new world, and it makes a lot you know better uh, for everybody and for myself, of course. So that's all I have right now. I'm sorry for the quick video. I know it's boring. I'll probably get some thumbs down. I'm sorry, you know, I'm just trying to get all these questions out there. But I'm gonna put some pictures up there right now of my updates as it went along with pictures. Again, I couldn't do any more videos after the two I did because they were shut down because of this COVID-19. Um, so hopefully that goes away at some point. Um, but until next time, so folks, fly safe, be safe, and I'll see you on the next video is going to be in the airplane and we we'll both be learning together so I have no idea what I'm doing but I've been to Moyer with using the demo from Dynon and I've been on my iPad using the IFD um, trainer app which is pretty cool I'm, the IFD the IFD 
Avidyne IFD540 trainer app. So I've been messing with that a lot, but I'm still gonna be all over the place and we'll be both learning together. So until then, I'll see you guys. Stay safe, see you soon. Thank you.